Hello and welcome to CMC Markets and this quick look at the week beginning the 10th of April when it's holiday shortened week this week with Easter coming up and uh, it's very difficult to make a case for the direction of stock markets at this point in time simply because over the past few days they haven't really gone anywhere. That's no better borne out by this chart that we're looking at right now, the FTSE 100, solid support at 72.45 and fairly decent resistance just below 7,400. If anything, um, it looks to me as if it could potentially be forming a little bit of a topping formation with the neckline at 72.45. As of recording of this video, we don't know the outcome of the Trump G uh, meeting in Mar-a-Lago in Florida and we also don't know what the non-farm payrolls numbers were on Friday but if the ADP numbers were any guide they're probably going to be decent numbers and that really does beg the question in the wake of the recent FOMC minutes as to how much slack there is in the US labor market. If you're to believe Neil Kashkari of the Minneapolis Fed there does appear to be a significant amount of slack in it because even though jobless claims are at um, significantly low levels of around about 234,000. The payrolls data continues to average well above 200,000, not only on the ADP but also on non-farms at the moment. And with the unemployment rate at 4.7%, we need to keep a very close eye on the participation rate to see whether or not we've got um, workers coming back into the workforce. And really I think it's on that note that we're going to be looking ahead to this week beginning the 10th of April because ultimately the, sh the focus shifts back to the United Kingdom, the UK. The inflation data here in the UK, CPI for March, unemployment for the three months to February and average earnings for the three months to February. And if the inflation numbers in the Eurozone are any significant guide then there is a tendency to perhaps think that maybe we're getting a little bit of a topping out pattern starting to come in the inflation numbers. And we'll certainly get a further indication of that with the Chinese CPI and PPI numbers, which are all also due out the week beginning the 10th of January. We've all, 10th of January, 10th of April even. We've also got the start of US earnings season, bank earnings season in particular, JP Morgan. Um, Wells Fargo and Citigroup. So we're going to be keeping an eye on them, certainly with respect to what US fiscal policy could be doing, US Federal Reserve rate policy, what the outlook is for that. And obviously the first, the first calls are how well um, US banks have done relative to the solid end that we saw in Q4. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to be focusing on sterling and the fact that we still don't know whether or not the pound is going to push lower against the dollar or push higher. My bias is for the pound to push higher. So in that context, I think what we really need to see is the inflation numbers sort of hold steady around about current levels. Now expectations for March CPI are for the inflation numbers to continue to come in around about that 2% level. Um, they were at 2.3% in February. But if we do get a little bit of a slowdown in the same way that we got a slowdown in EU CPI, then maybe that could actually start to weigh on the pound. Nonetheless, I think average earnings is probably more important than inflation. And the average earnings numbers that we saw last month also came in around about that 2.3%. So CPI was at 2.3%, average earnings was at 2.3%. So essentially there was no net wage growth going forward. We've also got to keep an eye on the unemployment numbers. They're going to be very, very key in the context of whether or not there is a tight labour market here in the UK. If they stay at their current levels of 4.7%, then you would expect to see wage growth continue to hold steady or even edge higher. If wage growth edges higher, um, then I think that's likely to have more of an effect on sterling than actually a slightly weaker CPI number. And let's not forget that retail prices come in, are trending at a much higher rate of around about 3.5%. So let's look at the key levels on the cable in the context of the discussion that we're having now. And obviously a lot will depend on the payrolls numbers that we saw out on Friday. Um, the key support level comes in on the cable for me around about 123.5, 123.80. Currently finding support around about the low 124s, 124.20 as, as recognised by these two moving averages here, the 50 and the 100 day. We have a triangular consolidation forming out. My bias is that we potentially could well trend higher, break through the 200 day moving average and head back 
towards that 130 level. Obviously a move back below 123.50 will negate that and keep us within the triangle that we've been consolidating in over the course of the most part of this year. So also keeping an eye out on the China data later this week, but in particular China trade. Um, we did see a sharp rise in imports in February, which was a significant surprise and a very, very sharp drop in exports. And I think we could well see that effect get reversed, given the fact that we saw the Chinese economy post a trade deficit. I think that's potentially a one-off because of the effects of China's Chinese New Year. But in particular, I'll be looking at Chinese PPI numbers. They came in at 7.8% last month. I would expect or hope to see them start to come down as inflationary pressures plateau in the wake of the topping out or the recent topping out in the oil price. So that's it for this week. On that note, may I wish you all a happy Easter and I will speak to you all um, in after Easter when we return after the 18th of April.